three-month sermon series. That's unheard of. Three-month sermon series on the book of Romans. If we were to go from, chap- from the first chapter all the way to the last chapter, verse by verse, of the book of Romans, it would be about a year in order for us to complete it. But we didn't go through the whole book. We, we, we went and we picked the chapter that we felt would be the most useful for you guys. And so we encourage you to read the whole book of Romans. It is the crown jewel of the Bible. And so coming from the book of Romans, now you understand what it means to be in Christ We want to start now going further. We want to speak and expound on spiritual growth from a practical standpoint. And what does that mean for you now today in our culture? So I'm not going to preach the whole sermon. I'm going to cut it short uh, due to the situation, the circumstance that we find ourselves in. So please Bear with me, but I want you to take the notes of the three points that I want to give you. Now, it's interesting that we spend billions of dollars as a society to look good on the outside while starving our soul on the inside. How many know that's true? We invest in what is temporary and ignore what is eternal. Not realizing that the greatest investment we can make is in our soul. I was reading an article about a man. He was, I don't know, maybe 5'2". And he paid thousands of dollars for surgery on a leg extension. Did anybody read that? And he got taller. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was tempted. Started looking up for the phone number, inquiring information. Uh, But then I had to stop myself and say, God created me this way. Let me stay this way. Now, not to say that if you, you know, you're 5'1", and you come in here, all of a sudden you're 6'3", I'm not going to question you. I'm not going to judge you. I might look at you a little astonished, right? Be like, oh. Some changes in your life. God is good. Won't he do it? Right? No judgment. We'll just say those words. Won't he do it? If he did it for you. You know, the goal of the gospel is very simple. The goal of the gospel is not to affirm you. The goal of the gospel is not to celebrate you is not to empower you to do whatever you want to do. The goal of the gospel is to rescue you, transform you, and empower you to do whatever God wants you to do. See, you might come from a generation of addiction, divorce, abuse, and brokenness. But church, allow me to remind you this morning that that doesn't mean you're destined to follow the same path. Allow me to remind you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Allow me to remind you this morning that when Jesus gets a hold of you, I'm telling you, Jesus loves you just as you are, but he loves you way too much to leave you as you are. You best believe that he will rescue you. He will pick you up. He will turn you around and He will put you on solid ground. God is in the business of changing hearts. He's in the business of changing minds. He's in the business of restoration. He's still in the business of healing, not only physically, but emotionally. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Sometimes we get amnesia and we forget the God that we serve. Serve. I'm telling you, when you said yes to Jesus, that is just the beginning. There is so much more in store for your life. Somebody say, there's more. You see, by God's grace, you can choose a different path for your own life and your kids. You can change the story for future generations 
of your family. As a matter of fact, Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 from the New Living Translation tells us this. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Come on. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. He saved you. And if you're not saved this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to the grace of Jesus Christ. But for those of you who are saved, he saved you. But there's so much more than just salvation. Some of you are just okay with the salvation. Not knowing and not realizing, wait a minute, there's more than just salvation? We said it already, the book of Romans is the book that keeps on giving. It's like an infomercial. You ever seen that? If you call now, you'll get it for $19.99. But wait, there's more. Right? For those of you who are into that kind of stuff, right? You'd be excited. Y'all have your pens ready. Y'all have phones ready. You're like, hold on. I want the, the more part. What's the more part? That's how our attitude should be in Christ Jesus. I want the more part. Where's more? I'm saved. I'm saved. That's good. Okay. I'm sa- I understand salvation by grace and not by works. Okay. What's next? There's more. So much more. Somebody said this quote sounded good, so I just threw it in there. They said, we cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. Let me say that again in case you want to post that. But it wasn't me. We cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. Somebody said that that definition of insanity is Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting new results. That's insanity. If you want to see results, there's a way that God designed it for you to see results in your life. Have you ever gone to Home Depot, Lowe's, or, and then you, you, you bought... I don't know, you bought a tree or fruit and you put it and you planted it and you see no fruit coming out. How many would say you would be very disappointed after spending all that money, you planted this orange tree and you get nothing? Or you planted what you thought was an orange tree and you got lemons? You go to your backyard, you say, you know what, I think it's time for origin. Let me go get an origin. And you see lemons. You'll be disappointed. Why? Because if you paid for the orange tree and it's giving you a different fruit, well, it's not the tree that you paid for. Or if you see nothing happening, there's a problem with the tree. Or there's a problem with what you did to the tree. Because when you plant, a tree that's supposed to produce fruit, they give you instructions on what to do and what not to do so that you can get the best results out of the tree. Mm. When you came to salvation in Christ Jesus, he gave you the instruction manual called the Holy Bible. And so if there's no fruit being produced inside your life my friend either one of two things either you are a counterfeit and you really did not have a true conversion and responded to the true gospel of Jesus Christ or two you did faithfully respond to the true gospel saving grace of Jesus Christ and you're not reading the instructions and applying them to the tree One of two. I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt this morning and suggest that maybe, just maybe, you're not applying the instructions to your life. And therefore, there is no fruit being produced out of a life that is supposed to produce fruit. 
And so we're talking about spiritual growth. Pastor, what is spiritual growth? I'm glad you asked. That's why I love preaching here because people ask questions. And so I came prepared for that question. What is spiritual growth? It's right there. Spiritual growth is the process of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. It's that simple. When we place our faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit begins the process of making us more like him, conforming us to his image and likeness. It's that simple. So, so how does this process begin? Well, the renewal we find in Christ involves the concept of spiritual growth. So just as a healthy physical life is one of growth, so a healthy spiritual life is a process of growth as well. Now, sadly, not all Christians grow. Not all Christians grow. And if they do grow, you have to keep in mind that spiritual growth is a process. And every person who is in Christ Jesus is in a different process of growth. Therefore, that's why there cannot be no one judging anyone. Because your level of growth is at a different level than mine. And that's okay. So we can't judge nobody. Some are taking longer than others. And that's okay. That's why we need the fruit of patience. Patience with one another. Some, some Christians, some brothers and sisters, in Lord, they, they can frustrate you. They can irk you, just like regular brothers and sisters. You know, growing up, you had little brothers and sisters. And you know, they, they irked you, but you, they were still your brother and sister. You couldn't divorce from them. They still your blood. But they irk you because they were immature. Here you are trying to be mature. And they're over here saying silly things to you and bothering you. Same thing in the Christian family. You're going to have brothers and sisters who are going to irk you. But they're still your brothers and your sisters. It is your responsibility to take them all under your wings and teach them and love on them and have patience on them. Not judge them, not talk behind their back, not say, look at this person. Man, when they going to grow up, don't they know? How they know if no one teaches them. And so we're all in different levels of growth and so physical growth by by default you grow right a person grows by default if you see a person that's not growing and you see a 15 year old kid still nursing on the mom's boobs you're gonna look at that very strange you're gonna say well wait a minute why is a 15 year old kid Right, that, that's strange. You wouldn't expect that. And that's how some Christians are. They're still on the milk. When they should be eating meat. If you're professing Christian by five years into being in Christ, you should be eating meat by then. And so we have to figure out what is going on. Am I growing spiritually? Well, we're going to find out. Because... There's three things I want to encourage us to make the right choices regarding spiritual growth. First, consider that spiritual growth is a choice commanded by God. That's the first thing. Spiritual growth is commanded by God. Implicitly stated in the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. And teaching them, them, who's them? Everyone who comes to Jesus. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So, Already there we see Jesus commanded his apostles to make disciples, baptizing them and teaching them everything to obey. So if you came to Jesus, hopefully you got baptized in water. If not, you want to sign up at the next steps table and say, hey, I'm ready to get baptized. 
because I gave my life to Jesus. I want to show everybody publicly that I'm dead to my old self and I'm resurrecting in Christ Jesus. So September, the third Sunday of September, we're baptizing. So you want to make sure you sign up. So Jesus commanded, make disciples, baptize them, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded. So implicit in the command to teach is that the disciples would be obedient learners, constantly growing as they learn and obey their Lord. Then explicitly stated is, the, is in the apostolic epistles. You have Peter. He ends his second epistle with a command to grow. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Look what he says. But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. So we are to grow in grace. We are to grow in knowledge of Jesus Christ. Pastor, how do we do that? How do I grow in grace? Well, you're not going to do it just coming here Sundays. I'm going to tell you that right now. Let me just start off by telling you how you will not grow. You will not grow just coming here on Sundays. You will grow, number one, getting yourself a good Bible that you can understand. Getting yourself a Bible dictionary. If you can afford it, get a Hebrew Greek Bible. You want to get some commentaries, but take the commentaries with a grain of salt because they are just opinions of writers uh, uh, reading the Bible. You want to talk to your pastors. We have great pastors here. You want to engage in a soul group, small Bible study beginning in September. You want to be engaged. You want to serve your local church. You want to serve in your community. When you do its and bits of all these things, you are being intentional in your spiritual growth by the time you know it you're not speaking the same you're not thinking the same why because you're hanging around with like-minded individuals you are allowing pastors and leaders to pour into your spirit not anybody can just pour into your spirit because the question is what is it that there's being poured into your spirit you got to get yourself around people that love you that care for you that really tell you the truth with love with wisdom them that'll take you under your wings or coffee and lunch and say look man I noticed these things in your life and I just want to caution you and I want to encourage you those are the people you want around you but if you got a bunch of people that always say yes to your issues and yes to how you handle yourself and yes about how you handle conflict and never bring godly correction I'm here to let you know church you're hanging with the wrong people get you some folks that will lay hands on you and rebuke you once in a while come on church get you some people that will sit with you open the bible and bring some kind of correction without you catching an attitude because you got to have the right heart when somebody is taking the time to love on you to encourage you to disciple you and to teach you the godly ways so it goes both ways it goes both ways. And we're here because we love you. We want to help you. We want to help you grow spiritually because spiritual growth is a choice. And it's commanded by God. And Peter tells you, grow in grace. Grow. And then he tells you how to grow. He begins his second epistle describing how we are to grow. Look at 2 Peter 1, 5 to 8. This is a good one. For this very reason, make every effort. Somebody say effort. Oh, I don't like that. I ain't like that. Some of y'all ate breakfast. Some of y'all didn't. At the count of three, I want you to say effort. One, two, three. Effort. That was a better effort. No pun intended. For this reason, make every effort. It means you play a part. It means that God is requiring you to do something other than just sit there. Make every effort to do what? Supplement your faith with virtue. Virtue is excellence. And with virtue, with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with steadfastness. And steadfastness with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love. For if, watch this, look at verse 8. Very important. I want you to highlight this in your Bible, in your notes, wherever you got. You need to memorize this one. For if these qualities, somebody say if. 
That's the key word right there. Sometimes we read the Bible so fast, we miss the key words. The key word is what? For if these qualities are yours and, watch this, and are increasing, increasing. It means it's never ending. It keeps on going, increasing. They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have these qualities and you continue to increase in these qualities, look what, what Peter is telling us. You will keep yourself from being ineffective and unfruitful. Could it be that the reason that you're saved but ineffective and unfruitful is that you stop praying, you stop your spiritual disciplines, you, you, you switch your spiritual disciplines for gossiping and self-doubt and insecure and you open the door for satanic demonic spirits to come into your house and now you're walking around depressed and you're walking around all somber when you used to, when you first started serving God, you used to pray you used to seek God every time somebody talked about fasting and prayer you got excited and now when you hear people talking about fasting and prayer you're talking about oh you're being too spiritual oh that's a sign my friends that is a red flag when things of God used to excite you and they don't excite you no more my friends that is a red flag the apostle Peter is saying you got to increase increase your time in fervent prayer prayer and fasting and studying scripture in serving your church in serving your community increase 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 somebody shout increase when you begin to increase you will not fall prey to the schemes of the enemy when you begin to increase you start seeing the flow of God's glory when you begin to increase in your devotions to God you start seeing God in a whole nother light things that used to bother you won't bother you no more things that used to hurt you won't hurt you no more could it be possible that the increase has stopped in your life because you have just stopped and have gotten complacent complacent is a dangerous place to be for if these qualities are yours and are increasing they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ see spiritual growth is not an option I'm going to say that again. Spiritual growth is not an option reserved for select Christians. No, no. The word of God commands us to grow. We should also remember that spiritual growth is a choice that requires diligent effort. That's my point number two. Requires diligent effort. Effort. You got to put in the work. The Holy Spirit does the work in you. But there's some things in the instruction books that he requires you to do. You got to do things. Like I said, unlike physical growth, people grow physically by default unless there is some kind of disorder. No effort is required in our part. We mature physically whenever we want to or not. Don't think just because you're growing old, you're growing spiritually. Don't think just because you're growing in age and you're in Christ that you're growing spiritually. Because I know a few people that have been in church a long time and I've got to question them. Like, dude, do you even pray? When it's time for prayer, they know where to be found. When it's time for Bible study, they know where to be found. But these are the people that I always want to criticize. They always have a criticism. Why? Because they failed to read what Apostle Peter instructed. So what happens is many people, they start off right, but then they stay stuck. Stuck. You're saved, but you're a saved, stuck Christian. Don't be a saved, stuck Christian. Don't be a saved, stuck Christian. 
God did not call you to be a saved, stuck Christian. God called you to be a saved Christian that applies the instructions of the apostles and continues to grow and mature in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ. And it shows in your life. It shows. You're smiling. You're encouraged. All hell is breaking loose in your life. And you have the audacity to come to church, sit up in the front, talking about thank you, Jesus. That's a saved Christian who's excelling every day in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Someone who doesn't deny what's going on in their life. They're not dumb. They see the issues in their life, in their kids. All hell is breaking loose. Their kids are going crazy. The marriage is falling apart. Finances are all over the place. But, 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 somebody say but. But one thing they know is that greater is he that sent them than he who's in the world. When you increase in your knowledge and the grace of Jesus Christ, all hell can break loose. But you still worship. You still praise. You're still smiling. Yes, you're crying. But through the tears, you're giving him glory. You're not in denial of the situation. But you have knowledge of Jesus Christ and his grace. And you won't allow anything to stop you from doing what God called you to do. See, spiritual growth requires concentrated effort. Jesus said it in John 6, 27. He said, do not work for the food that perishes. But work for the food that endures to eternal life. Which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. So when you work, don't work for things that don't matter. Don't waste your time or your energy on something that's not going to be beneficial to your soul. You got to tell the devil, devil, you got me once, but you're not going to get me a second time. I'm going to work for my salvation. I'm going to work for my legacy, for my children. I'm going to work for my soul. I'm going to work and do what I got to do so that I can increase in knowledge and in grace of Jesus Christ. I'm done with petty games. I'm done with petty parties. I'm done with crime. I'm done with feeling sorry for myself. I'm going to open the Bible. I'm going to get me some instructions. I'm going to apply my instructions. And I'm going to stand firm in the name of Jesus. And when you do that, you can't be touched. You can't be touched. He can try, but it won't work. You got to do your part. You got to work it out. And spiritual growth is not easy. By no means. We must work at it today, tomorrow, always. But we can take comfort in knowing this. And this is my last third point. We can take comfort in knowing that spiritual growth is a choice which is assisted by God. It is assisted by God. Church, we are not alone in our efforts. While we work out our salvation, God is at work in us. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him, God is working it out. Look at your other neighbor and tell him, God is working it out. I know you don't see it. I know you don't feel it. I know it seems like God is ignoring you. But trust me when I tell you, God is working it out in your behalf. He's working it out in your favor. You are his child. You have been called. You have been chosen. And when I tell you that God is working it out, he is not a man to lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. He is working it out. Look what Paul tells us, Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, 
not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works to you and you both to will and to work for his good pleasure he's working in you for his good pleasure so you best believe that he will get the glory out of your situation don't you try to help the Holy Spirit just like Pastor Joey says you're not a Holy Spirit Junior your job is to serve him your job is to praise him your job is to offer worship with your body as a sacrifice your job is to make your effort but don't you get in the way of the Holy Ghost you let the Holy Ghost Ghost working out. That marriage, he's working it out. Those crazy kids, he's working it out. Your finances, he's working it out. All you gotta do is say, thank you, Jesus. I don't see it. I don't feel it. Now things are getting worse, but I'm gonna praise you anyway. I'm gonna worship you anyway because your word says that you're working it out for your pleasure. For your pleasure. You see, just as he was with us in producing our new birth. Look at Titus 3.5. Titus 3.5. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness. Oh, no. But according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. You see, God desires to complete the work he started when he saved us. He didn't save you just to leave you the way you are. He has plans with your life. He has plans with your family. He has plans with your business. He has a dream for you, not your dream, his dream. You're going to have to put your dream aside and say, God, this is my dream. I'm going to throw it away. What is it that you have for me? Whatever it is, here I am, Lord. Look at Philippians 1.6. And I am sure of this. He who began a good work in you, will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Church, I want to encourage you. There is no excuse not to grow because Christ strengthens us. According to Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. And what do we mean by all things? We're talking about biblical things. We're not talking about your will. We're talking about God's will. When he says I can do all things, he's referring to God's will, not his will. I'm not going to do my thing. I'm going to do his thing. And if I'm busy doing his thing, then I can declare I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. I can stand firm. I can be faithful. I can be righteous. I can serve my community. I can serve my church because I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Church, I want to encourage you this morning. You see, growth happens when we're obedient and yield to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit gets a hold of our hearts, he shapes us and molds us so that we can come in alignment with the word of God. And when we come in alignment with the word of God, we're not living a carnal, lukewarm, or sinful life. When we submit and yield to the power of the Holy Spirit, we're able to rely less and less on human understanding or human wisdom or strength we move away from our own abilities and begin to see Jesus as the beginning and the end and the alpha and the omega when we yield to the Holy Spirit our ego and self dethroned and Jesus is lifted high when we work out our salvation with spiritual disciplines consistently no weapon formed against you shall prosper why because you realize that greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world you realize that if God be for you who can be against you you see church when you focus your efforts in drawing closer to Jesus you become untouchable to the schemes of the enemy 
when you get a clear picture and understanding who your redeemer is you will declare what the three Hebrews the three Hebrew boys declare they said we will not bow down to your God because the God that we serve can deliver us from your hands but it's the next sentence that blows me away they said and even if he doesn't deliver us we will still not bow down you see when you're focused on Jesus you can declare where all death is your victory where all death is your sting You see, church, that's the life you can expect in Christ Jesus. A life free from shame, from guilt, from sorrow and fear. Because in Jesus there is forgiveness. In Jesus there is healing. In Jesus there is freedom. In Jesus there is restoration. In Jesus there is mercy. In Jesus there is grace. And there is an opportunity to start over. There is an opportunity for spiritual growth. So church... What's your excuse? What's your excuse? Where are you in the spectrum of spiritual growth? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? What's stopping you from growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? What's your excuse? Why are you stagnant? Why are some of you still wrestling with shame and guilt? Why? Some of you are allowing the enemy to hang over some things over your head. Remember this. Remember this. Some of you need to turn around and say, I don't remember that. Because the Bible tells me in Romans 8.1, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And if I remember correctly, the Bible tells me that God takes our sins and he remembers them no more. So who's telling the truth? The voices in your head or God? You shouldn't be wrestling with guilt or shame any longer. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. It's time to move on. It's time to grow. It's time to get connected to soul group. It's time to serve your church, serve your community. Get involved. And when you get involved, you start growing. Because you're forgetting about yourself and you're taking care of God's business. And when you take care of God's business, by default, he takes care of you. It's that simple. When you serve God and you take care of his business, by default, he takes care of you. Close your eyes and bow your heads. Spirit of God. Father, I have spoken your word as you have given it to me. Holy Spirit, it's up to you to bring conviction. It's up to you to begin to mend the hearts and begin healing, inner healing. Holy Spirit, it's your job. So right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you begin to bring conviction. As everybody's head is bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to ask two questions. The first question is a question that depending on your answer will be the most important decision of your whole life because your life depends on it. And that question is very simple. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you following Jesus? If you're not, and you made up your mind today, you say, you know what, I don't understand much about this Jesus and following, but I I do want to follow him. I do want to learn more about him. And if that's your answer, 
We want to help you. We want to partner with you and help you. But you have to make your effort. You have to go to the next steps table after this. You have to fill out that form, put your information so that we can call you and follow up with you. So I'm going to count to three. If that's you today, all I'm going to ask you is raise your hand high enough for me to see it. Ushers, pay attention so that we can give this individual a card. So at the count of three, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I want to follow Jesus. I want to be a disciple. At the count of three, just raise your hand. Ready? One, two, three. Let me see your hand. Anyone that says, I want to be a follower of Jesus. No one. Okay. There's no one. Now watch this. I'm going to ask you to stand up as the worship team comes. Some of you, I know you need prayers. You're going through some things. Some of you are going through battles that you can't even talk about. The altar ministry is here. I'm going to ask the altar ministry to stand. I'm going to ask the church to stand. And I know that some of you need some prayer. And we don't want to leave this place without giving you that opportunity to be prayed with. So I'm going to ask the altar ministry to stand here. They're going to spread out. Go ahead, spread out. There you go. Move down. As the worship team begins to worship, we want to give you an opportunity to come forth so that we